As you may know, it's my job to corrupt young people with the contagious, infectious idea of individual freedom. It's my job to encourage you to think for yourself, question authorities. I would like to hear from any of you if you wish to concern yourself with the work we have in hand. We only have to eliminate useless greed to provide that none should be too big and none too small. Beautiful America can rise to the opportunity before it. It means to us all, every man a king. The debt ceiling is the legal limit on the total amount of debt the government can accrue. The limit applies to the two types of government debt, debt held by the public and debt held by government accounts. Public debt consists of outstanding bills and money owed by the government to various sources. Most of this money is borrowed in the form of bonds, notes, and other similar negotiable instruments. The 10-year treasury bond is one well-known example. When an investor buys one of these bonds, it is a debt the government has to repay. Government debt is money the government owes itself, which includes money for programs like Social Security and Medicare. When the government receives money from the public for these programs, it has the choice to either hold it in reserve or it can use it to cover existing bills for which it then puts an IOU on the account. This debt is not of immediate concern, but it will be once the money needs to be paid out on the obligation for which it was collected. Social Security will soon start to pay out more than it takes in as baby boomers retire, and this trend is projected to grow over the coming decades. Congress which controls federal spending and borrowing, uses the U.S. Treasury to carry out its directives. The Treasury issues bonds and notes to investors who in turn make a return on these investments through interest rates. These interest rates have always remained low as the U.S. has historically been able to pay its debts, a term referred to as creditworthiness. Since it was established in 1917 at $11.5 billion, the debt ceiling has been raised nearly 100 times. During the 1980s, it increased almost 200%, from $1 trillion to nearly $3 trillion, as President Reagan cut taxes while boosting military spending. Throughout the 90s, it nearly doubled to $6 trillion, and in the past decade, it's doubled again to well over $12 trillion, driven by two wars, deep tax cuts, and a sharp recession. In January of last year, it was increased by $1.9 trillion to its current level of $14.29 trillion. Once the government reaches this limit on borrowing, it can no longer issue debt. Without access to funds, the government can no longer pay day-to-day -day expenses like salaries, utility bills, and social security payments. The government would also almost certainly default on its debt, the consequences of which would be felt in financial markets and the larger economy. Because the government would be unable to pay back its debt, it would need to raise interest rates to encourage investment. Officials like Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke and Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner have repeatedly warned lawmakers that their failure to act would have catastrophic consequences. It's never an easy vote for Congress, as lawmakers worry that they will be seen as approving the record levels of debt if they raise the ceiling. When Republicans controlled both chambers of Congress in the last decade, Democrats routinely voted against raising the limit. When Democrats won control of Congress, Republicans voted against the tax. Any reality is an opinion. You make up your own reality. Think for yourself.